if you're using cloud code you must watch this video um, this is has been a significant upgrade to my workflow and productivity basically um, I assume that if you're using cloud code you're either using it inside your IDE inside Windsurf inside cursor or you moved to using it natively in your terminal for example in WSL or if you're on Linux or in a, in a, in a Mac using it natively in the terminal but a few days ago I discovered a, a interesting and very powerful solution that is called Tmux I, I hope that I'm pronouncing it well and it's completely transformed my a workflow and it feels amazing let me show you how it looks like from a high level so basically I have six different cloud codes instances running at the moment two different projects this is one project this is the other project and no I'm not feeling overwhelmed because um, if you architect this correctly it's actually very useful and obviously um, I still use a lot of stuff from my previous workflow so whenever a command has ended it's going to uh, make a sound and we use a uh, post tool uh, use hooks and pre tool uh, use uh, hooks etc but uh, in a moment I will dive into um, this setup and I will show you exactly what I did over here which is basically 100% customized based on my needs you can also customize it based on your needs so first of all the problem with normal WSL or any terminal basically you have one tab one thing if you're running a server you can't do anything else if you need logs you need to open a new window it's like having a desk with room for only one piece of paper if you close it you lose it so if you accidentally close your terminal everything dies your, st your server stops your SSH connection vanishes although I don't know if you're using SSH um, but in general it becomes very chaotic obviously you can open multiple terminal windows everywhere but it's very unintuitive and very chaotic um, so I figured out that many people professionals they are using Tmux so what exactly is Tmux so think of it as a terminal manager like I showed you before so basically in Tmax, you can have multiple panels in one win, win, in one video. Everything is and everything is persistent, which means it's survive disconnects. What does it mean by surviving disconnect? You can start a, a server, you can start a terminal or a panel, and then you can detach, meaning close it, and it will keep running. So, for example, if you have a long-running task in Cloud Code, you can close the terminal. And it will keep running and you can res re, um, resume to it afterwards it's somewhat similar to the concept of resuming in cloud code but when you resume a conversation in cloud code you only get back the context but it doesn't keep on working while you're away a uh, key concepts when it comes to tmax so you have sessions which are basically pretty straightforward the sessions you have windows and you have the panes um, a session can be here of as you can see the project is called Raspig which is my solution for generating ads at scale and monitoring them etc this is the session it comprises of windows we can generate as many windows as, as we would like and this whole thing has three panes at the moment first one second one and third one same here so basically as I said we have six different cloud code uh, instances running concurrently so basically what you get you can split to your screen into multiple terminal keeps everything running even if you disconnect and it helps you organize your work by project in separate sessions and it's very easy to jump between tasks <coughs> so this is like a simple comparison between a normal terminal and a tmax um, I'll skip this because I feel that I kind of covered this. One thing to mention is that Tmax has a learning curve. You need to understand how to use it. But uh, the workaround that I figured, you know, what I did is instead of trying to learn how to use Tmax and trying to memorize all the shortcuts, 
I just use Cloud Core in order to help me in customizing Tmax. So basically, the main thing that I did in, in my customization is I moved more control to the mouse, which uh, many hardcore developers or purists will say the whole idea is not using the mouse because using the mouse reduces speed. I am aware of this and I know it can harm productivity, but on the other hand, I didn't want to be slowed down by trying to learn all, all the the shortcuts and, and waste time and effort on this. So this is why I fully customized the whole thing based on my needs. So I added a lot of customizations that are related to um, using the mouse, added capability to use the clipboard. Obviously you still have the, the keyboard, the, the keyboard um, shortcuts, but I just wanted to add the capability of using the mouse. Now let me show you a few examples. So for example, let's open a new WSL Tmax. So there is a prefix in Tmax, usually it's control B, and then you do a question mark, and this shows you basically all the options that Tmax has. So you can split window vertically, you can re rename a session, you can kill a current window, you can select between different win windows, basically hop between windows. You can um, move to previously active, active panes, you can search for panes, etc. So a lot of capabilities and you can learn, memorize them, obviously, but I decided I don't want to memorize them. And as I said, I just customized it. So what I did basically is I, whenever I click the right mouse the right button of the mouse i have this following menu which i completely again i completely generated and it allows me to generate a new pan below generate a new pane below um, which you can see here what it did it opened a new pane we can open a new one so we have five and um, we can uh, switch between sessions, we can generate new windows, we can rename the pane, this is a capability that I also added because um, I want to have a, an option, let's say front end, so this is one pane, and we can add another pane, let's say rename, let's rename this pane for example, or this pane, rename pane, let's call it um, API. Just for example, and you can see here it, ch it changed. Now you want to align, ideally, you want to also align your cloud code conversations um, with the same name of the pane. So rename, I would rename to API, and then if I would like to resume, I just click resume, which you guys probably know already, and then you have a list of all uh, conversation and you can search by name. So this is uh, the capability of renaming. And as you can see here, there are a ton of customizations that I just added for me that will make it easier for me to navigate. Obviously you can click here, generate new sessions. You can come here and generate new windows within the session. And you can play around with the architecture in terms of if you wanna have uh, the same project called as a session, which is what I'm doing. And then one window with multiple panes or you can even have, um, let's say, multiple windows. So let's say one window is going to be the front end, another window is going to be the back end, and then all uh, panes inside can be related. So front end can be a um, UX UI conversation, it can be a um, tag and analytics session uh, conversation, etc. Back end can be API, can be performance, can be security, can be testing, whatever you, will you, you would like. So this is kind of somewhat similar to just creating branches in your GitHub or creating conversations in uh, your cloud code. Um, let me go back here. So I already showed you a few examples. I don't want to bore you with all the customization, customizations that I did, but the main thing is I opened cloud code, I told it to adjust my Tmax, I told it to, to plan and propose valuable ideas to make the UX more intuitive. 
And then I just went back and forth until, uh, until I felt that it was customized based on my needs. And obviously I'm able to adjust and I will adjust um, as time goes by. It's very customizable, which makes it so valuable. So we can resize panes. Uh, we can use keyboard for speed or mouse for precision. I prefer using the mouse at the moment because I, I didn't work the, you know, the extra miles using the keyboard for speed and it's something that I need to pick up. So I guess it slightly slows me down, but that's fine. Uh, what uh, session management, so we discussed this and we discussed the fact that you can play with the architecture as much as you would like. Now in terms of persistence, I think I, I conveyed the message. This is another benefit of, of uh, Termax, uh, Tmax. Initially, I wanted it just to help me organize the terminal better, so it will be a better flow. But there's also the, the fact that it is uh, persistent, which is very valuable. Um, a few things Claude suggested in terms of generating uh, just faster response, uh, just making the if you setting changes, which I don't feel it was significant, but um, if some of you really care about this type of stuff, it's also stuff that you can customize and I highly recommend doing this. So kind of summarizing, your terminal should adapt to how you work, not the other way around. And a lot of people that are using Cloud Code are stuck with using Cloud Code in the IDEs. And then the transition usually is going to work directly in the terminal. And I think the next phase is using Tmax or a similar um, tool that allows you to work with many terminals concurrently. I know that some of you might be thinking that this might be overwhelming. I think that with the new Claude um, model with the Opus 4.5 are um, most of what I need to do is orchestrate. And as long as I'm uh, sharp and I have enough processes and custom commands to test the code, um, etc. I think that even if I have, I think six is the maximum, six concurrent um, panes is the maximum that I'm able to control at the moment. Otherwise, I just neglect stuff. Um, but I can tell you that I've, I've been working with uh, Tmax in the last few days and I feel it has really significantly improved improve my pro productivity. Um, yeah, I guess that's pretty much it. If you enjoyed this video, obviously like and subscribe, leave a comment below if you have more tips and tricks for productivity gains when it comes to using Cloud Code. And until next time, keep on automating.